Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast Weekly Rundown. My name is Adam Glenn. I'm in New York City, in California, is Dax Holt. Hi, Dax. Hello, buddy. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you know, I, you know what? I'm tired. I'm not going to lie. I'm tired. You know what I did last night, Dex? I was Who'd out you see? Who did you see, Adam? I mean, I didn't see anybody too crazy or like people that's like really kind of juicy for us. I mean, so this is what happened last night, okay? Um, we're recording this on a Thursday. Wednesday night, there was a big party at Nightclub Marquee. Now, I'm not a nightclub guy, but I was there to shoot it, to cover it, to mm -hmm. cover the celebrities uh, that were supposed to be going to it. So I get there, and I have a camera. And it, well, what? It was crazy in front, but not too crazy. I mean, outside is like, you know, the girls who overdosed on fentanyl just like waiting outside, <laughs> waiting for the ambulance. Dude, I'm not even joking. I have the no Dex. I'm seriously not joking. Like, there's like for real. There's stuff. someone. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. There was like multiple like people who just oh like God. did some bad drugs outside. But I was like just waiting outside my camera, and I saw a few celebrities outside. I saw Nelly. I saw Ashanti. They showed up together. I saw well, like a lot of cool. Like, that's a cool little yeah. like hangout, right? Yeah, they were like the biggest names. Like I saw a lot of like social media type stars, mm. like people that aren't in the Us Weeklies, but people that end up on your TikTok somehow. Um, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to see how far I get with the camera. So I just, you know, started to become friends with the door guys there at the club. And they saw me with the camera. And then I just walk up and say, yeah, I'm here to just cover the party. The guy <laughs> sees me with the camera, like the main door guy who's usually like dicks to people. I was like, yeah, let him in, let him in. I was like, oh my God, I got in. <laughs> I got into the club, dude. And uh, then all of a sudden, like, I was trying to see how far I could take it. Yeah. And then they had like this one part that was kind of closed off for the people who bought bottles. And then I just like walked up to the, the rope. There's like bodyguards, you know, bouncers there. I just show my camera like, oh, he's cool. Let him in. He's got a camera. I'm like, dude, you guys have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I just, I just walked around this club with a book bag and a camera. And like, I was like right next to like um, some NBA players. Actually, you know who I saw there? was Chris Humphreys. Remember Chris Humphreys? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Do you remember Chris Humphreys? Yes. He was a part of one of the biggest television weddings of all time. Yeah. Yeah. That lasted for what? 28 days? Yeah. But by the way, what, what is, is, does he still play? I have no idea. No, no, he doesn't play, but I'll tell you what, he just looked, he was wearing a, um, a tank top in the gym, in the, in the club, but like not your average tank top. It's like the, I don't want to say the, the negative, the bad term for this type of tank. What do you call yes. like the white, what do you call those tank tops? A white tank top that people <laughs> that love their wives wear, not the other kind. <laughs> <laughs> you do. I Did I ever tell you the story that I had with this a long time ago when no. I learned not to use that term anymore? No. So, what? so I was uh, at a, like, I was, I coached gymnastics years and years ago. And um, I was across the gym and like at the front desk. And one of the, the moms of the kids comes in and she goes, Hey, do you, um, who's coach? Like, let's say John. And I was like, Oh, coach John, he's the one over there in the wife beater. And she looked at me and she goes, I work with battered women. Don't you ever use that terminology again. I <laughs> felt like such an idiot. I have not used it to this day. I'm so afraid to use it because I'm like, I, I didn't know. It was just like what people called yeah, dude, the tank it. tops growing up. They were all about the wife beater. And, oh, I just felt like such a piece of shit. And so, yeah. anyway, that's how I learned my lesson not to uh, use that terminology on it. So, yeah, now I mean, on, it's I... a tight white tank top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he was wearing a white tight. Again, we called it white. You know, growing up, I we called it the same thing as you did. We also called it, uh, and again, I don't even know if I could say the word. It, times are different, guys. So I don't even know. I don't want to get canceled. My, you know, I, I don't have a career, but if I do get one, I don't want this to come back. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so white yeah. tight tank top moving forward. Yes. So he was wearing a white tight tank top in the club. <laughs> it just looked like beat up. Like he just looked like disheveled a little bit. Um, I saw a few other people. I saw like, again, Mike Malak who came on the podcast. I saw mm -hmm. the full send guys who are big YouTube stars. Uh, you know, but it was like kind of funny to see 
how much I could pr- push it with holding a camera. And trust me, I got so far, like if I really wanted to and I, and I wasn't planning on drinking, I probably could have just like picked up someone bottles, you know, someone's bottle of champagne, just poured myself a glass. Like, what are you doing? I'd be like, camera? Like, oh, that's, <laughs> let him drink. Let wait, him drink, wait. So did know? you get anything good on camera from inside? Uh, I mean, I got like Nelly performing and I got some interviews. I got like Nelly outside, like a shot with him and Ashanti. And then I got some interviews inside, like outside with like, you know, you know, that guy dude with the sign. He's like the big yeah, social yeah, yeah. media star, like him and like those type of people. Nothing, nothing great. It was just like B-roll type footage. I mean, I, you know, it's so funny. Like this nightclub in particular had a little bit more light in it than I'm used mm-hmm. to. So you couldn't really hide. So like yeah. I was at the like right next to me, which was, is good uh, when you have a camera to have light. Sure, no, it's great for that. However, it's like you know you got to act the scene. You can't like start filming people in the club necessarily. Mm. Um, You're not as I low did, profile. You know who I did see there, and I've seen this guy out a lot. And again, this is a nobody, but this guy is like the the head of Showtime Sports, and he was there. Like I've seen this guy at a bunch of nightclubs, and he parties, and like he's like. This guy is like in like he's a party guy, which is just sort of funny and interesting. Like, but I don't know, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, Does nothing. he have a name or just head of no, Showtime guy? Again, head of Showtime. Like again, he's a suit who you wouldn't expect to like a guy to be partying at three in the morning. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Okay, that was my that was my weekly rundown. But we are going to do our <laughs> weekly rundown. We're giving <laughs> top ten stories of the week. Sorry for that rant guys that's we you know that's six minutes of what just happened to my life last night um let's do our top 10 stories but before we do the top 10 stories dax do you have a review i got a review all right this one if it pops up ever here we go comes from kathleen fisher says new fave i am so intrigued by all things behind the scenes of hollywood love to hear from the people we wouldn't hear from otherwise you guys ask all the questions i've always wanted answers to thank you for the awesome content from kathleen thank you kathleen Kathleen i mean that's what we're doing love it we are trying we're trying to give you guys the stories you can't hear anywhere else so thank you for that comment Thank All you, right. Kathleen Fisher. Now on to the top 10 stories of the week, starting with number 10, Dax. What do we got? Number 10, Rod Stewart's son, Sean Stewart, who uh, is kind of just one of those famous guys for obviously being the son of a major rock star, uh, apparently or allegedly has blown through his inheritance all to rebrand his clothing line. So this is a story that went up in uh, Page Six style, and uh, they're saying that uh, he basically had pulled all the money that he would have received upon his father's passing um, to basically salvage the his clothing brand called Dirty Weekend. Um, and a lot of people are saying, oh, wow, this is insane because this is the third time I think that he has relaunched this clothing line, but he's literally putting everything he has into it to make it work. And some people are saying, okay, well, maybe this the third time is the charm. I mean, he went on, he talked about the re- rebranding um, a couple months ago. He's got this new artist, Hector de Marquez, or Marquez uh, who's helping him do the relaunch. But Clearly, if you're pulling out all your inheritance, uh, I mean, this has to work for you, right? Like, there, what else is he going to do if he can't make this clothing brand work? And his daddy's money is all gone. What else is he going to do? Gets a job. That's what you got to do. You got to get a job. But he's also weird because he's been, you know, he's very well known, at least in the Hollywood scene. Everyone knows who he is in, mm-hmm. I guess, nightlife or just around L.A. Because the guy's been what going out since he's 13 years old pretty Mm -hmm. much so he just uh, runs in that like famous kid circle so like he was the one hanging out with paris and nikki you know and uh all all these other famous famous kids that were just running around hollywood back in like 2007 yeah i mean so you'd have to get a job uh i respect them for starting a business i mean as an entrepreneur it's not easy but i mean you would hope he'd be able to make it work based on his network. You know, mm-hmm. I, you have to think over his years. He'd yeah, have but it doesn't network. even matter your network. You just got to have cool shit that people want to wear at the end of the day. Because there's some dumb things that I've seen become huge brands just because, you know, they either they've got a cool person attached to them. Like, I don't think, oh, what is Sean Stewart wearing? That's what I want to wear out this weekend. So you might need to start attaching some of your like cool friends to it to, to make it that it brand so do you respect sean a little bit more not saying you didn't respect him before but do you respect him a little bit more 
that he's trying to do something in business, like kind of put out a brand, especially like he's kind of open about, yeah, I'm using money that I was supposed to inherit into mm-hmm. this business. I'm trying to make no, it work. A hundred percent. Going out there and making it on your own is awesome. I mean, people would argue he's not making it on his own. He's using his dad's money. But I would, I think that is cooler that he is trying to build a business than just live off daddy's money at the end of the day. Oh, it's got to be nice to have daddy's money. Though, I wish you know? I had fucking daddy's money. Oh, God damn it. God. I mean, it's got to be just a different way of life where it's just like you always have that in case shit happens money. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm trying, just I'm to, trying to do that, that one day for my children. It's not going so well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just you want to have it, but man, it's what a life. What a no Sean's story. I mean, it's funny. It's interesting that of all the things he could have done from music to, I think, I mean, what was he trying to do originally? I remember seeing well, him he not was too long like on the reality, hills. He was doing reality TV. He was doing producing of TV shows. Uh, so he's kind of always been in the Hollywood industry, but um, yeah, I, listen, clothing is a, is a tough beast to get into. I'll Very tell you tough much. industry. Very tough okay, industry. Let's move on. All right, we number spent nine. like 10 minutes longer talking about Sean Stewart than we ever have or will on this podcast. Slow week. Number nine. <laughs> uh, number nine is Shakira has quote unquote, no interest in dating Tom Cruise. There was a bunch of photos of them coming out uh, where they were hanging out at the formula one race. And it was just like the two of them chilling uh, in the pit together talking. And so of course, everyone jumps on to, Oh my God, are they dating? Or like, Literally two famous single people cannot hang out or get their photo taken without the world thinking that they're banging each other in the background. Um, but no, she was like, no, we literally were hanging out. I have no interest in dating him. Uh, it was great company, um, but I am not focused on dating him or anyone else at this moment. I am focused on dating. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm focused on dating. I'm focused on my children and my career, which I'm like, yeah, she just got out of a really long marriage. And the last thing I think she's thinking about is let me go find another high profile relationship to get into because that kind of burnt me. Yeah. Uh, this is one of those things that the internet jumped on this, you know, this is something like, Oh, this would be the great thing. We, the internet, meaning but would it, I really like Shakira and I don't need her turning into another like sheltered Katie Holmes. I don't think like, she I, would. I want her. And I was, dude, d- d- this Scientology stuff uh, gets gets messy. Yeah, but I don't think she, Tom Cruise will, again, I say this now, would be able to do what he did before again. I think, but with a celebrity. He couldn't, he couldn't uh, tame the she-wolf? I don't, no, I don't think he could tame the <laughs> she-wolf. That was a great, what a great title. Uh, I don't think he could do that with another celebrity. I think he's kind of tarnished his name with that, like the Scientology yeah. name and kind of making another celebrity turn to Scientology. I mean, especially with the contracts and everything that kind of go on with it. But I we think kind people of like would forced be this. Disappointed in her for doing that. Yeah, you know what I I'm think... saying? Like she's, she's like the strong independent woman. I think that's the last relationship you'd want to see her get into. Again, we still praise Tom Cruise. We still why? praise him. Why? Why do? Why? why are we praising this guy? He doesn't talk to his daughter because I mean, religion over religion. Yeah. Like I mean, not even religion. It's like it's crazy. I mean, it's insane. It's insane. But we still praise this guy, and we still he's our he's our hero. But it's it's amazing that this doesn't become. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you got a movie coming out and seeing it, but that being said, still probably not a great guy. No, number eight. Uh, number eight, Johnny Depp's ex-wife, Amber Heard, uh, spotted jogging around Spain after these reports came out that she had quit Hollywood. Um, so Amber was photographed. She was on this jog in Spain, uh, jogging around. She's got a white tight tank top on um, and black jogging pants. She's got a visor on, just cruising around. Uh, but there was a lot of stories coming out that she was like, I did, just wanted to get away from all the craziness, from all the people who basically hate her in the United States. And she is uh, bilingual. So she's over there having a great time getting her daughter away from the cameras, which in that regard, I think good for you. Like your daughter had nothing to do with all of this she shouldn't be subjected to all the crazy fans, the paparazzi, all that stuff. So in that regards, 
yeah, go move away, do your thing and go try to duck under the radar. Um, But the stories were that she was going to stick out of Hollywood for a while. I know she's got two movies coming out, but there aren't any that are in production at this time. And I don't know if that is a self choice or not a self choice, because I don't see a lot of people hiring her for more movies at this moment, just because she's got such a stained image. Yeah, I mean, let me ask you, Dax. Is, is Amber Heard the type of person now, if you saw her in a movie, you would say that's not the character, it's Amber Heard because of the Johnny no, Depp case? No, I would say all I can think about is her taking a shit on the bed. Uh, exactly. The shit on, that's, that's what all, think that's all I think about. Bed. I'd be like, yeah. oh, this, this actress, look at her. She shit on a bed. Yeah. And she blamed I, it on teacup little dogs that can't poop that big. Man. If I could just be a fly on the wall when she took a shit on the, or a fly on a piece of shit when she did that, um, I think that's a good move for her, though, right? Don't you think? Her, I think honestly, for her and her daughter, that's the best thing she could do is move, move. to. It, it's actually it makes you kind of sympathize with her a little bit and say, you yeah. know what, good move on your behalf, good and not for your own sanity, but for your child, so they could kind of grow up somewhat normal. Dude, now it's gonna be partly, a little bit weird when they get older, but. Partly for my sanity, I was tired of talking about her every single week. We we uh, <laughs> we were literally talking about Amber Heard almost every day for like months at a time. Yeah, thank so, you, Amber, on the, on our behalf for just yeah, getting thank away you from for it leaving all for the country bit. and not and giving up her citizenship. Now she, I'm sure she's still a citizen, <laughs> but uh, I, I do think that's a very smart move on her behalf, and I give her credit for that for yep. just kind of thinking, saying, "No, I'm gonna, I need to do this." Uh, for my business, for my life, for my personal life, for my daughter. So good move on her behalf. Number seven. Number seven is Meta Walker, who is Paul Walker's daughter, is honoring her late father uh, because she is doing a cameo in Fast X. This is the 145th installment of the Fast and the Furious franchise. Um, And uh, so she basically posts a little photo on her Instagram page saying, hey, look, check this out. This is a preview of my first cameo. It looks like her in a plane. I don't know if she is playing a flight attendant or what the role is. Um, But, uh, you know, she had also said, listen, I wasn't these are not co-stars for me. These are family members for me. You know, you've got her, her father's best friends in this movie. And so it's all like basically her uncles and her aunts that are in this movie. Vin Diesel, Jordana Brewster, Michelle Rodriguez, uh, Ludacris, Tyrese Gibson, all of them have been around her. She was one year old when that first movie came out. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's wild. I see her in New York city sometimes and, uh, it's kind of wild to just, uh, kind of see her. Um, what at what Fast and Furious did you stop watching the movie? No, uh, probably three. Yeah, I don't even know if I made it to three. Um, I was gonna say either one, two, or three, something like that. And then yeah, I, um, I'd had I'd been fasted and furious out by that yeah. point. By that time, I was like, "Slow down, slow down." <laughs> <laughs> You're going too fast. <laughs> all right, all right, slow it down a little bit. Chill out. Do what Indiana Jones did. Come back once every twenty years. You know, then I'm gonna be into it. Um, uh, you know what's so funny? Did you ever meet Paul Walker? <laughs> uh, let's see. Did I meet Paul? Um, shoot, I don't think so. so I don't I think I've met, met him. I met him. Oh, I met him at the airport, LaGuardia Airport. Okay. And when I met him, super nice guy, super cool. I mean, he's like one of those guys when you see him, like, oh, that's Paul Walker. You know, mm-hmm. like he just looks how he looks on TV. He's just in your face. Um, very cool, very nice. And I remember he goes, hey, man, I don't really want to talk in Canada, but well, what's your number? Let's set up something for a different day, actually. And I go, oh, here's my number. And he texted me his number. And. Oh, sure. A week later, he died. No. Yeah, it was like no. it was like something like ten days or so, roughly around that. I'm trying Holy to see shit, that's crazy. And I told him at the time I was like a comic, and like you're in New York, why don't you come out to a show? And he's yeah, man, I'd be down. That sounds awesome. Like super cool, like California bro. And uh, I just remember like a couple of days later, like it wasn't I, maybe a month or so. Yeah, he died. Do you remember where you were when you heard that news? Um, because for me, really... that was one of those like such a shocking death that I remember. Exactly I'm in shock right now thinking about it, honestly, because it was one of those things, it, it still hasn't hit me. Because I remember it was so like, wait, what? Like, this was like the first celebrity that, like, it might have been the first celebrity whose like phone number I got. 
mm-hmm. like and it was like, who's a big name. And I was like, whoa, I got Paul. And I remember like, I was like, am I going to hang out with this guy? Cause I, I thought he was a really good guy. And then he died. And I was like, man, like that's been my career, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, uh, where were you? Do you remember where you were? Yeah, we, we, um, I was at the Irvine spectrum and I was waiting on, uh, we were having a guy's night with Peter who was from TMZ and van. And so we were just doing a guy's night down at the spectrum in Irvine. And I was waiting for the two of them to show up. And I got the like TMZ alert on my phone and my jaw just dropped. I was like, are oh. you fucking kidding me? And it just kind of put like a weird haze over the whole, I would say that evening, but then obviously for like a good month after that. But yeah, the, the guy showed up and I was just like, dude, Paul Walker just died. And I remember us, we like ate dinner and then we went to like a Dave and Buster's or whatever. And we saw one of the Fast and Furious like games and we're like, we're going to play this game for Paul. <laughs> We're idiots, I know. Do you remember how? I mean, I want to quickly get out of this, but this story. But do you remember, like, you had a BlackBerry at TMZ, right? Uh, like way, way back in the yeah. day, maybe in like 2005, and then that's like right when the iPhone came out. So I, because I was doing photos, I kept talking about how much easier it would be to look at photos on the brand new iPhone. So I talked them into getting me an iPhone. So I got like literally the first iphone right when it came out so i just remember like getting those blackberry color like you'd get the messages the blinking light on your blackberry when something came up like an email from tmz like the news like something's going down yeah and anxiety i would get from it did mm. you get like do you remember that like that was like you see the i would look at my phone i see the color blinking i'm like man i have so much anxiety right now just looking at it it was just mine would get like if i knew that there was some big story that now i had to like that was going to ruin my night that's what would give me anxiety is like getting that email is like oh damn yeah now well, my weekend is shot my evening shot my whatever because someone went like oh great justin bieber decided to get in a car accident awesome all right well there here goes the rest of my evening now you know like turn off the movie oh i won't be putting the kids down to sleep because now i've got to deal with justin bieber yeah i remember, I remember. uh lindsey lohan coming to new york i was like so, this is not good something's gonna happen i'm gonna yeah. have to get woken up in the middle of the night and sure enough she got arrested in the middle of the night so mm-hmm. um Oh, it, it was never good. Speaking of shitty stories, number six. Uh, number six is that Dolph Lundgren is revealed that he had an eight year, or he has had an eight year battle with cancer. Um, and so, he, but he was doing it all. It was a private battle with cancer for the past eight years. And then he had this interview on in depth with Graham Bisinger, I think is how you say the name. Um, yeah, and bas- what, what is it? No, it's a popular fan. I always see it on YouTube. Yeah. I, I, I don't know who Graham is, but he is apparently well well to do. All right. Very good. Um, and he revealed that for the first time he was diagnosed with cancer back in 2015, that doctors were able to remove like this cancerous tumor in his kidney. And then he was doing these scans every six months and once a year and everything was fine for about five years. And then back in 2020, he was in Sweden, had some kind of acid reflux, didn't know what it was at the time got an MRI and found out there were a few more tumors in the same area. He said that six tumors were removed during a surgery, but one more tumor, which had grown to the size of a lemon and could not easily be removed, had been discovered in his liver. So that was in the fall of 2021. And so he began all this systemic therapy. um, And it seemed like things got like a lot worse at that time. And then there was all these different tumors that were popping up. And uh, the doctors were saying they're seeing him in his stomach, his spine, outside his kidneys, all this kind of stuff. And then basically said, okay, well, how much more time do I have, doctor? And he said, well, you should probably spend some more time with your family. And basically left it at that saying, hint, hint, wink, wink, you're not going to survive very long. Well, he ended up getting a second opinion from a doctor in London where he was filming like Aquaman in the Expendables franchise sequels and then uh, learned that his kidney cancer was now mutating more like lung cancer, leading to like a whole change in the, um, the treatment that he was doing. And at that time, he probably had like three or four months left, changed the whole way he was doing his treatment. And then it now it shrunk all of the tumors by 20 to 30% in the first three months, and then ended up shrinking most of them like 90%. So like, he's actually in a really good spot at this point. 
Yeah, wild, wild. I mean, talk about a battle. But the guy has had an interesting life, interesting career. I mean, before he was, you know, obviously a lot of people got to know him from stuff like Masters of the Universe and Rocky IV, obviously. You know, he was a bodyguard. He was a model. Yeah. So he's had this really long career. But besides that, Dolph is actually a genius. Mm. I did see that story pop up this week, uh, talking about how insanely smart he is because everyone focuses – really on his looks and it, his acting career. But like the dude is legit a, a genius. He's got an IQ of 160. And I'm reading that because I've honestly, I'm not smart enough to know at what point is the genius level <laughs> with yeah. IQ ratings. Do you have any clue? I like you tell me 160. I'm like, cool. And if it's 100, does that mean you're smart? I, I have no idea. Yeah, but he's got a chemical engineering degree from the Royal Institute of Technology that is based in Stockholm. And, uh, I mean, the guy is a legit, you know, he, spe- I, he, he speaks seven languages, apparently, English, French, Swedish, German, Spanish, Japanese, and Italian. I mean, it's pretty incredible, like, the kind of and life he had behind everything. most people know him as, like, this, like, robotic character from Rocky. Like, yeah. You don't know any of this stuff. No, but legit, do you know where, like, the cutoff line is from, like, normal person to then being super smart on the IQ charts? No, I mean, I I always thought I was probably like a thirty out of like a hundred. I didn't even know. I don't know. <laughs> like, what does the chart go up to? Yeah, I don't if know. If he's at one sixty, what does it go to? Have you ever even got your IQ tested? Fuck no, I don't want to know the answer. Don't want to know. That's like that's a question that I don't want to know. Who wants to know? You know why? Because then for the rest of my life, someone's gonna be like, "Oh, do you know your IQ?" And then I'm gonna have to like embarrassedly be like, "Yeah, twenty five, bro." Like. But it is what it is. Like, I'm still happy. I got a good smile. Like, I don't want to have to tell people that. Dax, do you remember what you got in your SATs? Fuck no, too. You took the ACTs. I have, dude, I don't even remember. I I have no idea. I definitely took them. I remember taking them at Villa Park High School at like six in the morning, but I have no idea what I got. And I may have selectively forgotten this because I was embarrassed. I'm gonna start. Um, I'm gonna start asking celebrities what they got in their SATs. I don't know. I just think that could be an interesting question. <laughs> Do you think people will answer it? I, I think the line say, "I don't remember." I'm like, "You remember that you didn't break a thousand eight year? You know, that's probably the only thing you do remember." Um, so, all right, number five. Uh, number five, Selling Sunset star Trishel Strauss is uh, now a married lady again. She married singer G Flip after like a year of dating. This was a pretty quick relationship, but they tied the knot according to a bunch of reports um, and that Entertainment Tonight and people both confirmed it on Wednesday that uh, she's she's a 41-year-old real estate agent. She married the Australian singer who is 28 um, and... That's all I really have on it. You remember Trishel was previously in a longtime relationship with, um, what was his name? Jason? Jason? Yeah. Uh, what's his uh, name? Uh, Oppenheimen. Jason Oppenheimen. Before that, she was married to the guy from that one show. Uh, yeah, you the guy from- uh, Jason, uh, not Jason, Justin Hartley Justin from, Harley, um, from this Modern is us. Family. No, This Is Us. And from... Yes, from This Is Us. Just kidding. <laughs> Jeez. I feel, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of screaming at their their speakers right now. I know. I know. I know. Um, we should really come up with like a – there's not a good celebrity pop culture random trivia show. Mm. Like that people could really – because I think I would do really well even though I couldn't think mm. of Justin Hartley's name. But what, there's I, not I feel good... like it depends on the situation. Like some days I feel like I'm totally on fire and you could – throw anything at me and I would rattle it off. And then there's other times I'm like, uh, 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 what's his name? What's that movie? Uh, uh, uh. So this girl probably. is, by the way, like not G flip, Chrishell, like very pretty. G Trishel? Yeah. Trishel. Yeah. Or what's her name? Chrishell. 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 <laughs> so I know it's, you know, it's funny. I know a celebrity yeah. that wanted to, when she became single, wanted to like, Hey, let's go on a date. But she with wanted her? To go, yeah, with her. Okay. And she wanted to go to a place where they were going to get seen. And mm. the celebrity was like, hey, man, like, I don't want to do that. Like, can we go someplace where we don't have to go to, like, one of those spots? Like, I want to kind of yeah. go to someplace low-key. And I, I think it just got weird between them. They never went out. Uh, the celebrity is, like, a good celebrity. I wouldn't say the biggest, not the small, like, a solid celebrity. 
Okay. Um, so it says little unique stuff. About I, did, I did meet Chriselle once when she was still with Justin. I met them at an Emmy's party. We were. Oh, um, you told me that. You said they were great, yeah. right? Yeah, they they were totally awesome. This Justin's was back. cool. I think this was when they were engaged. They hadn't gotten married yet, and honestly, this is us hadn't turned into the biggest show. It was maybe on for one season at that point, so that's how yeah. I knew him. And this was before, obviously, Selling Sunset. So she wasn't as a big name at that point. But um, they had the Emmy Award or the Emmy party at this, um, what is it, like movie, radio, TV, movie, museum or something like that Mm -hmm. in Hollywood. And I remember being down in the basement of this thing where they have the full set of Silence of the Lambs. And so you go and like you're literally in like this jail prison kind of it's dark and eerie. And I was like down there with them checking out the wax statue of Anthony Hopkins in like this prison setting. And I'm like, this is creepy. And then, yeah, they both became crazy famous after that. And yeah, I'm just, they were here. good looking couple. She's very pretty, but now she's married <laughs> this girl and, and now a year. And uh, I guess they're happy. I thought it was going to be a flank. I didn't think this was the real deal. I thought this was honestly, I thought this was a, uh, Kind of like a publicity stunt in some ways when yeah. they first started dating. Like, oh, here she all of a sudden she's into this girl, she's dating this girl, but now they're married, and we wish them the best. Number four. Uh, number four, Beyonce. Uh, she kicked off her Renaissance tour. Uh, this is a big, big deal. Everyone, I feel like, has been talking about the fact that she is now back out on tour. Um, but the crazy part is how many songs she is singing during this tour. She has a 37 set song list <laughs> for, for going out. So when you go wow. to see this, you are going to see basically all of her hits. Um, so she's got basically um, every one of Renaissance's 16 tracks, three songs from Dangerously in Love, three songs from B-Day, one from I Am Sasha Fierce, five songs from um, her number four album, uh, three songs from Beyonce, and two from Lemonade. And so it's like people are going, oh, by the way, she also does uh, some Destiny Child's hits, Lion King, and a couple like popular collaborations. So that's fun. That's a fun show. I think I've seen a lot of videos of her up on stage, just shaking her butt. The costumes look amazing. This probably looks like, like I'm kind of bummed. I don't have tickets for this because it looks like this is going to be like one of the most amazing tours of all time. You know, it's so funny. So like in the beginning of the show, I was talking about Nelly and Nelly performed at the club, but what he does, he performs probably for like 10 minutes. Okay. But he does like 40 seconds of each good song. Like, oh, ride with me. And then it just goes, all right. And then it goes to the next one. It's like, so he does like 40 seconds of each song. You're like, oh, oh, okay. But the I thing, the thing with him is like, I actually want to hear all of those songs completely play out. That like, yeah. that is my, Nelly's playlist is like my jam right there. That's yeah, the shit was, I love. I actually, I've seen performances at clubs before. It was probably one of the more fun performances to see because Nelly's like one of those kind of uh, interesting people to see live in a way. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. just you don't see him a lot, so it's just kind of fun rather than some of the other rappers. Beyonce, in the other hand, seems like on this tour that she's doing a lot of the the like. It's one of those concerts where what is she going to do next? What is she going to do next? Is she going to mix it up? Um, unfortunately, you know maybe what she should do for this tour is sing EXO and reenact the music video. <laughs> the EXO music video on on stage. Uh, if you I, haven't listen, seen the XO, I I think that she should do that, and I think that you should bring a plus one. That is me. Okay, we can do it. If you haven't seen the EXO music video, I recommend it. Please, guys, watch the Beyonce EXO music video and see if you recognize someone in the video. That's Boom, just, we're a just tip. leave it at that. Yeah, just leave it at that. Uh, number what number are we on? Number three. Number three, Robert De Niro confirming the birth of a brand new baby. He is now the father of seven at the age of 79. So he had, it was kind of funny. He was doing like all these interviews recently. He had done like an interview with Gail King and like didn't mention anything about the fact that his, his partner had just given birth to his seventh child. And then I guess there, he was doing an interview with ET Canada about, you know, and it was all about his new film about my father. And they had said something like, oh, yeah, so you're the father of six. Well, and he goes, no, actually the father of seven. That's how the news broke that he, that she had just given birth, which I think is really funny. And then Gail King actually ended up calling up and saying, well, 
what the hell? Why didn't you see anything? And he goes, well, it didn't come up in the interview. <laughs> but there were some, I guess, photos um, from a couple of weeks back where him and uh, Tiffany Chen, which is his um, partner of several years, were out. And there was some speculation because she looked pregnant in the photos. But I think no one wanted to say anything because you wouldn't expect him to be fathering more children at the age of 79. Uh, but he did make it very clear that this it was a planned pregnancy. Um, and that uh, they were very, they're very much in love and they wanted to bring this child into the world. I have a hard time with that because, yes, I think if you want to be a father, you deserve to be a father. You should you should not have that taken away. But I also feel like 79, it doesn't feel very fair to a child that they're going to get a couple years with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's no, my only gripe. You're not wrong in that sense. What about 60? I, I mean... I, I, it is what it is. I, I just think the the longer you go into life, that you're 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 not going to be around for much. Like you know, that well, just seems like you're robbing a kid kid. of their childhood. If you're sixty, you know, obviously you could probably live to eighty. Hopefully, so you have twenty years with them, which you know, at least you get to see them grow up a little bit. But mm -hmm. seventy nine is pretty. And, old. and I and I say this, but like. A 30-year-old could have a kid and then die in a car accident two days later. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. it is what it is. I just I, – it's just tough to see some someone that old having – bringing a brand-new baby into the world. Let me ask you But this listen, yes. I don't have to deal with it. I'm not 79 having to get up in the middle of the night and deal with a crying infant. So, I'm good. Robert De Niro's an actor, you know? You know, he's not there to – that's that's just his job. You know, he's he's an actor. Is it right as an interviewer? I'm not saying for me, but as someone's being interviewed, to question them, like, "Hey, you're 79 years old, planning to have kids. Do you do you think it's a fair question to ask them? Do you think it's right to have a baby at 79?" Oh hell no, I wouldn't ask that. You, you're saying you would ask that? I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. But if you, I would want to know. The, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd want to know the answer if someone had the balls to ask it. But I I, I wouldn't ask it myself. I wouldn't ask myself. I hope someone else does because I want to see what happens. You know, <laughs> exactly. like, ooh, ooh. that's one of those questions where if you heard somebody I'd be like, oh, that that one hurt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't need that awkwardness in my life. Do you think he's got? He's definitely has like a living nanny though, right? There's I'm no sure way a 79 year old guy is like, oh, I gotta wake up in the middle of the night for this kid. Like he's just he's coasting. God, just think about it. like you got your nanny. Like, hey, I'm gonna need you to change the baby's diaper and then my diaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Number two. Uh, number two. So we've talked about this Jamie Foxx thing for the last couple of weeks. Um, and it sounds like there are new reports coming out saying that his family and friends are reportedly preparing for the worst, hoping for the best, but prepping for the worst. Um, you know, he has obviously been in the hospital for numerous weeks at this point. There has been so much mystery around why the heck he's in there. His family has really not said much. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people kind of coming to the, the determination that if he was actually doing better, like they're making it sound why haven't they put out more information and why isn't he out of the hospital? And so that's why there's more speculation now leading to things must be really a lot worse than they're leading on, even though we're seeing certain things on social media where it looks like him talking where, you know, the post said something like appreciate all the love feeling blessed. And everyone just said, okay, well that's Jamie posting it when I'm not sure that that's who posted it. And so we're all just kind of waiting for some information, some kind of details, something to come out of the the Fox camp to give his fans either some hope or be realistic with what's really going on. Yeah. Um, last week, I think I said that I think it was a little bit of a, um, you know, obviously there was something seriously going on, but I thought the way they were handling it, it could have been a little bit of a PR type spin on it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I think of this story because I haven't – It the story is getting picked up by a lot of outlets, but not every outlet's picking up because I think people are starting to question what's going on here. Um, yeah. But it's something that you really consider like maybe this is factual. Maybe it is true. So I have people reach out to me every day. What's going on with Jamie Foxx? What, what's going on with Jamie Foxx? And I don't know. I mean the, the inner circle is keeping the, what they know very close to home. They're not leaking it, which is kind of crazy, but I don't – 
What are your thoughts on this? I, dude, I've been saying from the beginning with this lack of information, it makes me pretty nervous that it's it's a really bad situation that he yeah. may not be coming out of because again, you give people hints, you let people know he's doing better. You, you, you give something. And if there's no good news, that's when you stay super quiet and you don't let anyone in. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, being, so I'm just, I'm nervous for where this is going to head is all it comes down to. I, I, yeah, I, there's a bunch of weird thoughts in my head and none of them are any, I don't, I don't have any inside information on it i just have a bunch of uh questions regarding it regarding how serious is it what is it has there been any pr spin on this Mm -hmm. are they using this as leverage for something when i mean leverage i shouldn't say the word leverage i mean more like i don't know it's just i I, from from my experience working in this industry you start to question everything but at the end day it's just sad it's very sad um all right dex the number one story of the week Number one story of the week is Kim Zolciak Bierman and Croy Bierman uh, announcing that they are headed to divorce and that uh, one source is saying it could get really, really bad. Uh, so people did a whole article about them and this con- that there could be a contentious and potential custody battle that is looming. They've got four children together. They've got their nine-year-old twins. Um, and then they've got uh, a, a son who is 10 and Croy, who, Croy Jagger, who's 11. Um, and then they also, if you remember, Kim's children, her two daughters, uh, Ariana and Brielle, um, both of them have been legally adopted by Croy as well. So there's a lot of children involved in this whole thing. Um, and it seems like this is headed towards divorce. I'm going to be cynical in this whole thing and say they seemed really happy. I have a really hard time believing this divorce. Yeah. Um, you, you have a hard time. Interesting. You're the. I haven't even thought about that. I haven't thought that. You know you, why? why? Because uh, this sounds so bad, but like I, I, so I know that they've had some financial problems. Like their house was going into foreclosure. You know, there's things going on in their life, but you know what could rebound all your financial struggles? Getting oh, a lot of TV coverage, getting on, you know, being on Real Housewives of Atlanta, then doing the girls trips, that's going to fuel a bunch of money in back into the bank account, right? Well, if you're not interesting, the shows aren't going to have you on. If you're going through a divorce and there's a bunch of drama, the, you're going to be the spotlight of attention. I have not heard bad rumors about these two. I don't re- remember hearing that they were struggling at all or there being any indication that they were struggling. They always seemed extremely happy together. So it leads me to believe, like, is this manufactured to start up a storyline to get them back in the flow of reality TV superstardom? Not uh, that is the first time I've heard that theory of this. And Mm -hmm. honestly, Dax, I kind of don't disagree with that. Like it kind of I don't want to say it makes sense, but like it's a great perspective on it. Um, cause again, we don't know, but it's a great perspective and it makes you think, uh, and you're right. And like, like, listen, I always thought they had a great relationship. You know, even Brielle talked about how great he adopted her kids. He, she even talked about, uh, with Brielle, who's been on the podcast, the daughter of Kim even said how great of a guy, you know, he's mm-hmm. been. So it's, it's, I think we were all shocked. Like, wait, what? Like we heard about the financial struggles and the kids reportedly said that they were just not true. Like there was just you know, some mistakes on the calculating part of it. But from what you're saying, it's just a really interesting perspective where instead of like, listen, we love each other, you know, like we are married. Let's make it newsworthy. Let's keep our names relevant. Like let's play the reality card. And this yeah. is part of it. So she, she I don't know that out. She, she knows how to be a fantastic reality star. And what sells is strife and conflict and, you know, I got to tell you, I, I'm sure the executives at Bravo are drooling right now over all of these stories. I mean, Bravo's just been in the news nonstop with Scandaval and this and like that makes good TV. Everyone's tuning in to watch, you know, um, Vanderpump Rules because of Scandaval. 
everyone will tune in to Real Housewives of Atlanta if they're going to spotlight all of this drama, even if it's made up drama. And then all of a sudden they, oh, we we solved our problems. We went to counseling. We're doing better now. Well, you know, the, it, it, it has a happy ending. And you know what? The happiest thing about it is now they're out of their financial woes and everything is good for them. Yeah, honestly, that's uh, that that's. I thank you for sharing that perspective on it and what your thoughts are on it. Because you're welcome, now, Adam. You're yeah, welcome. Because now I'm starting to question it. And I, again, we're not. A, <laughs> I feel like we're turning. Not returning, but like we're this Hollywood conspiracy podcast. Like whatever you hear in the news, question it. But no, it's like it's show business at the end of the day. So there's a lot of that that happens behind the scenes. I mean, we've worked on these stories where. Shit like this happens, and it happens a lot. It's a wild, wild I, I'm thing. Curious, but- I'm curious what some of our listeners think. And if you guys are not a part of our Facebook group, I highly, highly suggest it. It's called Off the Record. I actually, if you go to HollywoodRaw.com, there is a link. We have our, our basically, what is that called? Like a, uh, We have all the links to the different things you have. Go to HollywoodRaw.com, scroll down, go to our Facebook page, Off the Record, become a a subscriber of it, and then you guys can give us your opinion on what you think is going on. If you think I am fucking batshit crazy, I want to hear it, but uh, sound off on your thoughts. And then, uh, by the way, uh, we've been talking about this for quite some time, this Ask Us Anything episode. It is slated for next Wednesday. We're going to be answering all your guys' questions. Um, and literally, nothing is off limits. You can Some ask stuff. us anything you... I don't want to talk about that weird thing that happened at summer camp in the summer of 97. We're going to... And if someone asks, you're going to answer it, though. No. no. Oh, come on. Oh, they said it was a banana, Dax. <laughs> um, sorry. So uh, you can ask us anything. Um, we will answer it all. But that is slated for uh, next Wednesday to release. So go. And the only way you can actually put a question in is by going and being a part of our private Facebook group. So pushing it hard because I love all the interactions we get on there. All right. Anyway, that is the end that we have uh, finished our wrap up for this week. Our raw rundown is now complete. Make sure you follow us on any social media platform. We got we got a TikTok, we got an Instagram, we got a Facebook, we got the private Facebook page, we got Twitter, we got it all. Find us at Hollywood Raw. You can find uh, Adam at Adam Glenn. You can find me at Dax Holt. And make sure you go and leave us a review on our uh, our iTunes page. That's where we're reading from at the top of the show. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. Bye, ciao. Guys, hope you liked that video. We got a lot more where that came from. Hit that bell, like, subscribe, share with a friend. The best thing to do support us is really doing that. And uh, we really need the money because we need hair gel. (laughs) 